What made you pick mechanical engineering? Um, <laughs> it was the most, I think mechanical, I'm, I think I'm very visual, and to me, chemical engineering was not visual. Electrical engineering was not visual, but mechanical for the most part, although then I started studying heat transfer, which, which ended up being my favorite, um, and that part of it is not visual. But you know, originally looking at all the disciplines of engineering, mechanical was the closest to, to the way my brain thought at the time. And we did not, I may have chosen aerospace engineering, but the University of North Dakota did not have that as an option, which I think is fine because I think a mechanical engineering base can take you a lot of directions and obviously can go to the aerospace or biomedical um, area. So, but mostly I think it was because of the visual nature that at least I anticipated it would be at the time when I chose. So does that mean that when you have time, you're good at fixing things like at home? Um, <clears throat> I can, yeah. I, I don't know if you know. I don't know if I'd qualify myself as good at it or not. Um. The fact that you can. I can. <laughs> well, you know, I just actually, I actually really never knew that about myself because in my yeah. family, we, you know, we called somebody. They right. came, they fixed right. it, and it really wasn't until I was training for station that I said, "Oh, using yeah. tools, it's just not that hard." Yeah. And fixing things, exactly. Just well, not I, that hard. I remember the the first time I changed a tire on my car. And in fact, I was an undergraduate student at the time, and. My car had a flat tire, and it, I'm at my apartment, and I have to do something. I was like, "Well," and and I remember some of my friends. Well, why didn't you call? There's directions. <laughs> you know, I followed the directions, and it, I was surprised how easy it was. <laughs> this is really, really simple to change this tire. And why didn't I do it when I was in high school? I could have. You know, it's that simple. But it just it just wasn't something I did. And and I, I wouldn't say that I've done a lot of fixing things. You know, I, you know, a lot of times it's the balance of do you have the time to do it or the money to pay somebody, you know, even though you have the capability to do it, you just don't because there's other things you'd rather do. But I feel that I could if I needed to, a lot of things. I mean, the fact that you're up there fixing things on the space station, I mean, things break, things need maintained, right. and the fact that you're up there doing it with your hair all <laughs> big and wild is really going to speak to a whole generation of girls who are just going to think it's really normal to be the one that fixes things. That's great. I think that's great. I hope that what we do in space can reach those girls that may not think that that's a possibility. What do you, what do you think it'll be like to be the only woman on the crew? Well, I was, you know, for STS-124. And actually, having started engineering when I was 18, 19 years old, I was always one of 20% or fewer females, oftentimes the only girl in the class, sometimes one of two or three girls in the class. My engineering graduating class, I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 20% of us were females. And so it's just normal to me. It doesn't seem unusual. And I think just because, you know, starting at that age, I was in groups where it was mostly, mostly boys or men, um, it, it doesn't seem unusual to be a part of a crew that I'm the only female. It's kind of standard for <laughs> the way I've known things to be. What do you think girls today need to know that they don't know? Like what would you encourage them about? I think it's important that girls know they can, they can be the fix-it person, the smart person, and still be a feminine person. They can still enjoy girl things. You don't, you know, just because you like girl things to sew, you like pretty dresses, whatever it happens to be, you can still be the smart person who can figure things out and who can get dirty and fix things. And um, you don't have to be one or the other. There's a combination that you can be. And I think that's important for girls to know that. They, I, there might be a perception that if you choose engineering, you're, you're not, you're giving up something, I don't know. And, and I just, I hope that girls don't think that, but if they do, I would like to be able to show them that there, you can be both, it's possible. What about having a family? Do you think you have to choose? No, I don't think you have to choose. I, I think it's important that you have, you know, that your husband is obviously on the same page <laughs> and, and believes the same, the same way that you do about it and, is, and supports what you're doing, but I think absolutely it can work um, 
you can be a supportive mother, be a good mother, and still have the career that you dreamed about having.